So 
if you have a four on our scale, what does it mean? This is the highest level of scar tissue, EGF cirrhosis. If you have a four on the shock scale, which is spelled wrong, what do you have? You don't have cirrhosis. <coughs> you have scar tissue, but not cirrhosis. And you know, you really do want to make sure that you're looking at the right scale. I don't care if you remember the name. You just have to ask what the highest number is yeah. that you can get. And then, you know, if you can try to remember the name, then you sound like you're, you know, Dr. Orlando. <laughs> but we have a scale of going to cirrhosis of the liver when you have hepatitis C. And how long does it take you? We get to cirrhosis? Yeah. Okay, 20, 20 years is when we really, after two decades, after 20 years, is when we really start thinking about the issue of cirrhosis. It goes so slow that usually there's no big consequences for most people until about 20 years after you're infected. And can you shrink that duration? Make, make yourself get cirrhosis a little faster. Yeah, sure. now, yeah, a really good way would be to drink alcohol, which I'll abbreviate. Uh, eat a lot of fatty foods. Okay. Bad fats. Well, okay. All right, what else? Cigarettes? I mean, listen, what else? Uh, stimulants? Marijuana. Yeah. for that hepatitis B, same thing. If you have too much fat in your liver, what's with that? So I'm going to have to uh, get a biopsy to see uh, how much fat is Well, that's true because you can't really tell unless you get the biopsy. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you can do about this? We're looking uh, for things you can fix because you can not drink alcohol or cut back, right? Mm -hmm. How much alcohol can you drink? Alcohol. 
And then we get down to 15 or 16, and they're, they're so insignificant that we put them there. But it's not, they're not major risk factors. Mm -hmm. Would stress that, contribute? What? Would stress contribute? It's never been shown to accelerate the force of hepatitis C. It does other things to you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so this is modifiable, this is modifiable, this is modifiable. Uh, what would I, I, could this be modifiable? Yeah. No. Um, get the vaccination. Yeah, you want it, or you can treat it, or you can get vaccinated if you've never had it, right? The, vac the vaccinations are very effective. And how many do you usually get to get protected? Three. 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 So you check to find out if you've been vaccinated, if you need to be vaccinated. What if you have no insurance, you have no access to the test? Uh, you come in, I don't know you, you don't know me, and you're my doctor, and I say, I don't have any insurance, and I'm leaving town, but I have hepatitis C. What would you do? You should get vaccinated anyway, because you can't get over-vaccinated, but you, you can get under-vaccinated. Can you get hepatitis B twice if you're vaccinated already? That's a really good question. Many, we did a... Um, we had a look at years ago at our database. We found out half of the people had already been exposed to hepatitis B. And what does that mean? If you've been exposed but there's no uh, virus in your blood, is it gone? No. No. It's dormant. It's dormant. It's dormant. And we say the same is true of the herpes viruses, yeah. the chicken pox virus, which comes back in the form of what? Shingles. 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 They're dormant. Shingles virus. You can now get a vaccination uh, for uh, shingles. Huh? You can and you yeah. should, right? Yeah, you should, especially you should. if you're What if you never family. had the chicken pox? You just did. Yeah, they they have 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 I never had. Yeah, yeah. you should get vaccinated. Okay. <laughs> uh, we, well, these are dormant, um, but they can come back. Yeah. And the same is true of hepatitis B, although it's rare to have it reactivate. Uh, most of the people, what percent of people, I should ask, what percent of people who say I hadn't been vaccinated, if I got hepatitis B today, what would I look like in a month? Yellow. Yellow, pretty sick, right? And in six months, what are my chances of still having hep C in my, hep B in my blood? It comes out automatically. What, what, what are my chances of having the virus in my blood in six months? You have the antigen, not the virus. You have the antibiotic, not the antigen. What are chances of having the antigen, which is a protein on the virus? 6%. Most people who get hepatitis B as an adult make it go dormant. Six, only 6% 6 keep it around, and 94% it goes dormant. But when it's dormant, it always has a chance of reactivating, and that's why it's better to get vaccinated than to get exposed to the virus and have it go dormant. Because if you get vaccinated, it will never come back. You're just protected. So if you have hepatitis C and you got you got back and you got the B, you have hepatitis B, will that stay there? The hepatitis C will make that B not be able to go away like that six percent cancer? I'm not sure I understand your question, but oh, um, okay. Let me say it differently. Okay. Um, say somebody has hepatitis B as an adult. Active, and have a good active chance. hepatitis B. Yeah. Okay. And so they can't cure it on their own if they have hepatitis C, <coughs> right? You can cure it. Totally different viruses. Yeah. Totally different viruses. Yeah, totally different right. viruses. But B wouldn't go away if you have the C on its own. Or could it? Sure. Actually, I, I thought that's what you're asking. There is a very, you know, you would think this is, these are such different viruses, they have completely different genetic material, right? What's the genetic material of hep B? DNA. DNA. And what's the genetic material of RNA. hep C? RNA. These are so different. I mean, it's ap basically apples and oranges. So you would think that, you know, this one would be on cruise control with its own thing and hep C would be on its cruise control with its, its thing because they're so different. Does that happen? No. It's correct. What happens? You almost always have one or the other. 
Yeah. She, she cancels out what? the bee. You can yeah, hear the C. yeah, C cancels out the B. In fact, uh -huh. that's people who got hep C and it shut down the hep B. We don't even understand why that happens. And it doesn't happen right away. It may take years. Um, for B to go away? Possible. For B to go away, yeah. Possible. Possible. Although, so it's, it's actually relatively rare to have co-infection with B and C. Told me when, I got, when I got vaccinated for B, right, and they, they, when I was diagnosed with C, they, they, they you know, vaccinated me for B, and they told me if I got hepatitis B, it would kill me. Hmm. So, well, that sounds like me telling you you can't drink alcohol. I'm just saying that, because I'm, I'm asking if that's, if that's true. No, be, but I think what they were getting at is if your liver already has one virus in it, yeah. um, and then you get another virus, mm -hmm. Whether it's A or B or D plus B or E, mm -hmm. uh, what, what are you more likely to have? It's worse side effects, right? Two viruses is a lot worse for liver than one. And so if you already have one, you don't want to get another one because it, you know you risk you risk your liver is much higher. And so they probably didn't want to go and give you that kind of explanation. They just say, oh well, you need a vaccination because it's going to kill you if you get it. We doctors love to exaggerate stuff to try to motivate you. <laughs> um, so, you know, that gets to this whole thing, when do you need to be treated? So I'm going to change this scale down here to the number of years you've had, you, you've had hepatitis C. 20, 30. How do you tell how long you've had hepatitis C? What? Okay, let me say, let's say you have stage two of four fibrosis. How long have you had hepatitis C? 20 years. You could have had it for 50 years. You know, yeah. You don't know. Could have had it for 10 years, you could have had it for 50 years. Why is that? How come the, how come there's not like this Pac-Man just slowly chewing away at your liver and you can just say, well, you know, you're halfway, halfway to the end, so you probably had it for 20 years. Because everybody's different. Yeah, why is that? Mm -hmm. Well, well so not the man, they don't know that. Well, what do you tell them? The yeah. usual blood tests don't tell you if you have hep C. You don't only sure know if you have hep C if you get the test. Yeah. Right? So let's say here's typical blood enzyme, liver enzyme level if you have hep C. If your immune system freaks out and starts attacking your liver, what might you see in a month? A thousand. Which is, in the medical world, is very attention-getting. But if that occurs right away, it increases your chance of kicking the virus out of your body completely. The same is true of hep B. If your body freaks out, it, it tries to kill it right away, your chances are that it will actually get rid of it out of your body. And that person is called a spontaneous response. So one out of four people have that freak out response. We don't know exactly why, but one out of four people are approximately spontaneous remitters. And so the virus gets in the body and then the immune system makes it dormant, right? Right. It's not dormant. No. No, it's not. It's gone. It's cured. It's cured. It's gone. It's gone. Why can't hep C go dormant? It's, a it's, a DNA. It's, that's right, Martha. It's not a DNA virus. It's an RNA virus, and it can't ever make itself into DNA. So it can't hide in our own DNA. It tries to hide itself. It tries to evade the immune system and stay dormant for periods of time. How does it do that? It mutates. It changes. That is one way. It tries to hide from the immune system. It mutates constantly, so you know you develop a response to that one strand, and then it changes itself, so it's no longer sensitive. What else can it do? Doesn't it incorporate itself into the cell? It act. It can incorporate itself, but what it can do is it, it can circle itself, make itself into a circle like the wagon train. Mm -hmm. And you know, typically our bodies like to chop. Um, things like DNA and RNA off from the ends. 
-hmm. In fact, that's one of the mechanisms of, by which we all get old. Our <coughs> chromosomes are chewed up from the ends and, you know, eventually you lose it. And so this virus is so smart, it will circle itself to try to evade the immune system because then there's no ends to chop off. And, it can, oh, and, it, and so it can okay. stay dormant. But eventually, eventually that's not a stable situation and it goes away. So hepatitis C can hide for a bit, but it can't hide for long. And that's why we wait for 12 to 24 weeks after treatment to see if it's there. Because by then, it's either come back or it hasn't come back. Or the same situation if you had pricked yourself and you were testing the blood, like you said earlier, that would you still have the 12 to 24 week range to see if it was going to go away on its own? And that's an incredibly important question that people need to understand. If it takes, if we're thinking 12 to 24 weeks is the amount of time that we wait to see if the virus comes back, it's exactly the same amount of time we wait to see if the virus is going to spontaneously disappear. Okay. And why do we care? Uh, because it's a lot easier uh, um, if it goes away spontaneously. Yeah, than that's treat right. Somebody. You'll never need treatment, right, unless you reinfect yourself, which is unlikely. But what I, why else do we care? What if it doesn't disappear? Oh, well, then you need treatment. When? A that's right. The reason we, we, we actually care more than any other reason is that if you just got hepatitis C, and you know you just got hepatitis C, and it doesn't go away within three to six months, what's the recommendation? Treatment. Well, Start treatment Start immediately. Start treatment right now. Why? Because it's, it's a lot easier to... Than 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 extremely high cure rate. Yeah. 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 If you get treated in the first six months, you should get... If you get infected and you get um, don't remit in the first six months, you should get treatment right away. Yeah, I'm guessing that with these new medications, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the treatments are going to, I mean, probably a few weeks is going to be all you really need. It'll be interesting to see how that sorts out. In this case, so the word that hepatitis C virus with new treatment from disappearing within 72 hours. Oh, yeah. And it, well, but that happens with a lot of these new potent medications. And, you know, the important thing is that if you look at these new medications that are coming out, if you just take one of these new pills, the virus level is way up here. What happens is it's Lots. down here. Uh -huh. right. But then what happens? Go right ahead. Right yeah, right and right unless you, if you only take one medication, it starts doing that. It's too fast. Uh -huh. um, in about five days starts going back up again. And that's why, you know, we talk about what are going to be approved in December. What are the two medications named? Okay. <laughs> are these two medications sound a lot alike, unfortunately. Are they related? No. No, they don't. No. They're in the same class? Are they protease yes. inhibitors? One of them is. Which one? The one to the bottom. Good, Martha. You're on. You're at it. <laughs> <Really? laughs> <I know. laughs> You've been studying on the slide. <laughs> this, is, this is a protease inhibitor. Can you give me um, two other protease inhibitors? Telepropyr. And uh, so what's that? What's the BPR? Both separate. Well, so what's the phosphor here? It's a very good polymerase inhibitor, which what? sounds a lot polymerase instead of protease. <coughs> and it sounds a lot alike, but it ain't. Okay, it's a totally different class of drugs. Which means, you know, you can actually, when you treat hepatitis C, you don't want to take one drug because if you do, it will become resistant. You have to combine it with some other stuff. And you don't know right offhand what, what combination is the most effective, and that's why you need these studies. So someone who had taken the old treatment and it may not have worked for them, their chances with the new treatment would be good. Reason, reasonable. Are they going to be as effective as if you were never treated before? 
<laughs> Probably not. Why, what do you tell somebody, I got treated before, what are my chances of it working this time? Good. Say 50-50. Better. Well, you have some questions to ask, right? You have some questions to ask. What, are the, what might it be based on? Okay, uh, that's that's actually what wasn't what I was thinking, but that's a very important thing. Did you take your medications? Because so often, you know, people will feel so bad on the, these treatments that they'll skip a few doses. And I might not find out till the end, but it's like, why do you have two bottles of rotten fire and they were left over? Uh, you know, it's because people cheated. Because, and I understand it. I mean, if you feel yeah. like cheating, right? I mean, you wake up and you feel so crappy and then, you know, you're like, you gotta take all these pills again, they make me sick. So people will not take them when they're supposed they, to. They'll miss a dose. They'll miss a dose. And then you finally I mean, have a decent so. morning, right? And, and yeah. then you, the next morning you do the same yeah. thing. So then you turn out, it's two weeks later, you haven't been taking that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking... The reason that's an important question is we are looking for reasons that you didn't respond. And so why did you not respond? Why didn't the treatment work? Was it because you didn't take the medications exactly the way you were supposed to? That's, that's kind of good because that might suggest that this time you did pay attention and take it, your chances are going to improve. What other reasons might you not respond? Go down. The virus may be resistant. Yeah. And how might that manifest in terms of how those blood tests look like that like you're waiting for? I mean, what can those look like? You, you're on treatment, and you just start here. Let's say you oh, you'd start triple therapy all at once. What can it look like in, say, four weeks? Can be gone, which is like, yay. Does that mean you're cured? No. Right. It's, it's it, it increases it's your chances of being cured, right? But what else can it look like? Like it just goes down and it could go back. Down. Like it, like it goes down a little bit. And, then, and yeah. what's that called? If this is halfway and it, it doesn't go below like that halfway line, what's that called? Non-responder. Close. No. Null no responder. No responder. No responder is like the the one the the people who have a virus that doesn't respond almost at all, which is a really bad way of saying it. But your virus does not really respond to treatment. If you are a null responder and you take retreatment, it's the hardest one, right? It's the hardest one. Your best your best thing is if you have a responsive virus and you didn't take the treatment the way it was supposed to. The worst case scenario is that you're a null responder plus give me some other things that might lower your chances of getting cured. You have a different genotype. A resistant genotype, such as what's the new resistant? Yes. The interesting thing is the one that's going to be hardest to treat in the coming years is going to one. We're always ah oh, crap. You have genotype one. That's the hardest one. In the coming years, three is going to be the one we really dislike the most. What else? How about cirrhosis? Yeah. Right. The more the more damage to your liver that you have, the harder it is to get rid of. Yeah. Some other things. Yes, yeah, got some people on my autoimmune system. Well, autoimmune more makes it harder to take the interferon. Mm. What other things can make you? Less likely to respond. Let me get gender, race. Hmm. What if you got your mother? What if you got harder? Weight. Good. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, if vertical. It's done, right? Yeah. Uh, drugs and alcohol. Well, yeah. yeah. alcohol. Diabetes. We go back to the uh, same diabetes. Way. Yes, but why? Why? Very good. Very good. What's the answer? People who have diabetes are at higher risk for fatty liver. Okay. You have these things. Okay. And I want to make something go away. Um, do drugs worsen the course of hepatitis C? Mm, no, it's not. 
Yes. But alcohol, alcohol does. Alcohol does. Alcohol does. Alcohol does. Alcohol does. Alcohol does. Alcohol Cigarettes, yes. Yeah. Cigarettes, yes. To a small extent. Yeah. Like drugs, Heroin? No. 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 Methamphetamine? Yeah. Yes. No. Say no. Say no. no. I'm, not, I'm not saying they're benign. Okay, I'm not saying they're benign. I'm just saying in terms of the hep C. Hep C no longer being your main issue if you're using methamphetamine or heroin or cocaine, right? Because if it come back, if you start using heroin here, and you start, using, you start getting hep C here. In 25 years, um, what are your chances of being dead? Great. From heroin. Very little. Good. Little. Depends on where you're 30 smaller. years. 30 years. Correct. 33 years. Really? I can give you the exact date on this. What about you? 33 years. What are your chances of being dead from heroin? Good. It's, uh, it's about 50%. It's about 50%. Percent. Heroin sounds about is right. huge. I mean, you, you, how many of you, your friends, if you started using drugs with, they're alive now? Like half of them, right? Half of them. Yeah. Yeah. Is that right? physically yeah. yeah. or is that just everything? It's just yeah, everything. It's, it's just everything conspires. And you get a chance to be in debt after just having a C for 33 years. What? <coughs> what? Like, no. no. It's 2%. It I mean, it's nothing. I mean, look at the difference. So if you have a choice, if you're doing heroin, you're exactly. having yeah. Well, somebody comes in and, you know, I'll Google, they'll be racing into this clinic. Oh, my God, I have hepatitis C. I don't know what to do. And, you know, take the history. So what are you, what are you using now? Oh, you know, some heroin and, and speed balling or something like that. And so, you know, what's in my head? Right, hep C is something I want I, that might help me for what reason? Because if a person's here for hepatitis, what am I thinking? That this person needs what? Help with drugs, right? Uh -huh. But if they're here for hep C, yeah, we can, we can do it. Really, I'd love to help you with your hep C, but we might use hep C to, as an intervention to help some people you know, convince them to you know, deal with these other things, which are much more likely to cause problems. Yes. And if you manipulated. <laughs> I proudly manipulate. I proudly manipulate. It's all, all, all in all the interest. All in the interest of But there's another thing, and that is if somebody comes in and I take the history and they're doing a pint of vodka a day um, and they're you know, speedballing and smoking weed, um, what do I do? Yeah. What, what, what's my first? Uh, what's my first avenue of intervention? The first avenue is uh, come back when you're sober. Uh uh No. Oh, work no. With. Work I never. I want people to come back. I'm in. If, you're drinking, you know, if somebody, what? How? How good does it do? I I love this. You're lucky you're on the stuff. Um, somebody comes in and they and they have a big problem, like they're drinking like alcoholism and they have hepatitis C. And I say to you, say you came in for me and I said to you, go out and come back when you stop doing it. <laughs> what do you mean? I never come back. Never come back. Never come back. I never come back. I'd be like, I will see you later. <laughs> um, and I get that. I mean, now I'm exactly. That I think that's an appropriate response. And so my my response is, we have a great group. Why don't you start coming to this group? Because yeah. a lot of people are just like you, and there's a place you can get help. Because this is actually the one I want to focus on. And most people are like, oh my God, I work on the heroin. And you know, heroin is, is relatively easy compared to okay. you know, alcohol. Compared to alcohol. Alcohol. Yeah, it's okay. It's the worst drug there is. Okay. Far and away. Well, actually, the number one of, of all the ones we've talked about, the number one uh, biggest problem is nicotine. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. And it's the hardest one we have to get people off of, right? Because, you, you know. As we're vaping it now. What? As we're vaping it. I agree with you. Those are, those are, those are, are, are like miracles, those little vapor tastes. Okay, we're done for the day. Thank you.